For more information on tutoring, personalized video solutions, or how to support MOOF University and the production of more videos, check out MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. So tetrahydrofolate, we mentioned that it transfers a variety of one carbon groups and we showed them the methylene group formal, formamino, methenol, and methyl. And we said that tetrahydrofolate was important in transferring intermediately oxidized or intermediately reduced um, one carbon groups. And that's mostly the case, right? Because uh, at least in the first video we, we mentioned just, we didn't say mostly, but here I'm just specifying it's mostly the case because the methyl group is actually the most reduced that a one carbon group could be. Uh, that's not really intermediately reduced or intermediately oxidized. That's the most reduced, but there's a special deal with that one. And we'll see that later. Okay. Now, um, tetrahydrofolate structure looks like this. Okay. You might come across it as tetrahydrofolic acid, and that would just have these uh, carboxyl groups protonated. But it's the same molecule. It's just tetrahydrofolate would be, or sorry, tetrahydrofolic acid would be protonated, protonated at those positions. So, um, so like I said, this is tetrahydrofolate. It's got these uh, tetra refers to four um, hydro hydrogens. Oops. Hydro is hydrogens, and folate refers to the rest of the molecules. So the four hydrogens that we're talking about are these two green guys and these two blue guys. Also, this nitrogen here is nitrogen number five, and this one is nitrogen number 10. That's important to keep in mind. Okay. So tetrahydrofolate is also called THF or H4 folate or FH4. FH4 just meaning folate, H4, tetrahydro, four hydrogens. Now this can come from dihydrofolate, which only has two of these hydrogens. Okay, so it's uh, slightly more oxidized, and that's DHF H2 folate or FH2. And then down here we've got folate. Okay, so as far as uh, and of course folate has doesn't have those two green hydrogens. It's it's more oxidized still. So all of them mostly have the same structure. Uh, they all have this. Uh, this pteridine ring over here, uh, and this portion of the molecule here, that's the para-amino benzoate, and then this portion over here that comes from glutamate. So one thing I wanna mention is that folate is specifically vitamin B9. Um, often you'll see folate or folates um, just as a term that use, is used to de describe or mention all three of these. And so you might see that to be the case. Folate or folates refers to all of these guys. Um, but folate specifically, just this one right here, is a vitamin supplement. All right, so if you're buying folate or folic acid as a um, vitamin, it's specifically this guy right here. Okay. Um, THF though is found in food that we eat. Okay, so if you're buying, if you're getting it in food, you're getting this. If you're uh, getting this in uh, uh, the supplement form, you're getting this. Now, this folate can be reduced. To dihydrofolate by an enzyme called dihydrofolate reductase and so that would require specifically um, a coenzyme to provide those uh, provide the reducing power and that is NADPH so we'll use an NADPH there to reduce it to dihydrofolate and we'll do that same thing again to get tetrahydrofolate again using dihydrofolate reductase it's going to reduce dihydrofolate so there's this question then of how exactly does this thing, this THF that we're talking about, how does this transfer one carbon units? Well, the one carbon unit that's going to be transferred will bind to either the N5 nitrogen, the N10 nitrogen, or both of those nitrogens, and is transferred from that position to the species that's accepting the one carbon group. Okay, and we'll see that actually in the next video. Where does that one carbon group that gets attached at this position, or at one of those two positions, or both, where does that one carbon group come from? Well, most of the one carbon units come from the carbon that's in serine side chain. Now, of course, serine's an amino acid. What happens is in uh, serine's conversion to glycine, which of course glycine doesn't have a carbon in its side chain, serine has one carbon in its side chain. THF will grab serine's um, side chain and basically uh, take that one carbon group. Okay. And then it can convert it into a variety of one carbon groups that can eventually be donated, um, you know, in different ways. 
So we'll kind of see how all this works as far as the one carbon unit, how it gets attached here at this position and how it's converted into a variety of one carbon units uh, in the video on conversions. And in fact, in that video, I'm not going to draw this whole portion of the molecule or the whole molecule. What I'm going to do is just look at the important portion when it comes to the one carbon transfer reactions. And that's the portion bound by these two dotted lines. Okay, so just that portion is important because that has the N5 and N10 um, atoms there uh, where the one carbon group is going to be. And that's really what's important to us when we think about this guy as a one carbon transfer cofactor. Okay, so uh, I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with friends. Thank you and happy studying.